Hi, this is Fulker Azizi speaking from Amsterdam, and this talk is on effective estimation of deep generative language models, a collaboration with Tom Pelschmacher. Deep generative models, or deep latent variable models, are generative models with neural likelihood, or neural sampling distribution. Since the publication of variational encoders in 2014, these models have gained popularity, and that's because VAEs admit an efficient gradient-based training algorithm based on ideas uh, from variational inference and stochastic computation graphs. There are at least two angles from which we can motivate a deep LVM. From a statistical point of view, the marginalization you see on the slide breaks independence assumptions in the likelihood, leading to more expressive distributions. From an application point of view, the posterior distribution of a deep LVM reveals something about the correlations exploited by the generative model, by the joint distribution you see on, in the slide. This has applications such as disentanglement learning and controllable generation, as well as unsupervised and semi-supervised learning. In NLP, deep LVMs are particularly appealing to researchers interested in text generation, in which case most fully supervised deep models employ what we call a strong generator. A strong generator is a sampling distribution that makes no independence assumption whatsoever. There are many examples in this class. Essentially, every likelihood-based model parameterized by either a recurrent architecture or a transformer. These models can essentially learn an arbitrarily expressive distribution without the need for the marginalization I showed you earlier. Still, whereas these are our very best generators, they lack a latent space, and thus they cannot answer interesting posterior queries, for which we may have lots of applications. When we then combine deep LVMs and our best generators, something undesirable happens. A failure mode known as posterior collapse. Essentially, the sampling distribution, that is our strong generator, models the data by exploiting correlations purely in data space. In our, in our autoregressive model, this means modeling the next word exclusively as a function of the observed prefix, while completely disregarding the latent variable. When that happens, the joint distribution, our generative model, becomes a product of two independent factors, a prior over latent space and a likelihood over data space. And as a consequence, the posterior distribution can only expose a structure that already existed in the prior. In most cases, that's known because priors are not typically informed by data. This posterior collapse problem is a consequence of our model not expressing a preference for correlating X and Z, the observations and the latent, in the likelihood. Some might think that posterior collapse is some sort of curse introduced by variational inference, but that's not the whole story. If you adopt a probabilistic modeling framework, then models should express preferences for certain types of solutions already in their own statistical design. And this one here simply does not. To further illustrate that collapse is something deeply rooted in our sampling distributions, consider this example. On the left, you see a collapsed model, uh, samples from a collapsed model. So we start by sampling a latent representation conditioned on the first sentence. We then condition on, this, on the last sentence and sample a second latent representation. We then choose four points by interpolating along the hyperplane that connects these two sentences in latent space. And then we sample sentences from the likelihood conditioned on each of those four points. The samples, as you see, look like English. In fact, they can made to look as good as those of our best known latent variable models. What they do not share is anything in common. They seem completely unrelated. And that is because when we conditioned on the first sentence to obtain the first code, we got nothing but a, a sample from a standard Gaussian prior, as if no conditioning ha had happened. The exact same thing happened for the last sentence. And as a consequence, none of the other four points retained anything about the both phase sentences we started with. Now on the right-hand side, you see what happens when the model is not collapsed. 
the first and last samples, latent samples conditioned on the first and last sentences, will explain some of the features in those sentences. Perhaps something about lexical choices, perhaps something about shallow syntactic structure. And so do the interpolations. Now, Bauman and colleagues in their original paper referred to these walks as homotopies, and they are a great device to criticize deep LDMs. Now, we've been talking about the true posterior of a model, but generally that is not an object we can actually represent. Thus, we typically train deep LVMs via amortized variational inference, granting them their most popular name, variational autoencoders, famous VEs. VEs attempt to minimize a divergence from an intractable true posterior to a tractable approximation Q that we designed. And they do that via an objective known as the evidence lower bound, or elbow. As we saw previously, where the likelihood is a strong generator, the joint distribution turns out a product of two independent factors. As a consequence, the true posterior collapses to the prior. And then variational inference finds a trivial solution to this optimization problem. It returns the prior itself. Now we may ask, is this a case of bad local optimum? Not quite. Alemi and colleagues have shown that for any optima of the elbow, there is a spectrum of models ranging from collapsed to non-collapsed models. While these models explain the data about equally well, they vary in how they explain the data, namely by exploiting correlations purely in data space, or at least by partly using their latent space. It seems like a lot can go wrong. So it's a good thing to think about how can we criticize VAs. So we can criticize VAs quantitatively by at least three intrinsic quantities. Important sampling estimates of held out likelihood. And we do need important sampling as otherwise our estimates are too noisy and too poor to be useful to lead to meaningful conclusions. We can look into distortion a notion of average reconstruction error, and we look into the rate. The rate is a nap per bound of mutual information between x and z. When the rate is zero, we are confident that the model has collapsed. Qualitatively, we can inspect samples, data samples generated from the model. In the paper, we discuss how prior samples and posterior samples tell us very different things. It also matters whether, you, whether we generate sentences stochastically or deterministically given a sample Z. We also discussed that in the paper. Other diagnostic tools can be derived from downstream tasks where VAEs may find applications. But we do highlight the importance of diagnostics based on generations. And that's because they introduce fewer confounders. Check our paper for the following contributions. We review a number of strategies to combat posterior collapse and test them in a deep latent language model using English data. Note that most of these techniques had not yet been tested with linguistic data. We also make a few technical contributions aimed at finding models with higher rates. One way of doing so is to directly target a positive rate via constrained optimization. We call that MDR in the paper. Another way of doing so is to pick a prior family that by design can never be retrieved by the approximate posterior. We call that strong priors in the paper. Our paper also covers plenty of literature from our own community, as well as from other communities such as machine learning and computer vision, and we really recommend you to check that out. Our experimental setup is focused on English with small data sets. Because most techniques have a few critical hyperparameters, we use Bayesian optimization to search systematically with a budget. Our sampling distributions are all parameterized by GRUs, and Z here is used to initialize the recurrent cell. We criticize our converged models using the intrinsic indicators I discussed, as well as the diagnostics based on generations. And these diagnostics can be made systematic uh, with the assistance of some edit distance metrics.
We invite you to check our paper and come to the Q&A. For now, we list its main findings. Most techniques converge to non-collapsed models, with two exceptions, word dropout and KL annealing. Though the others perform similarly, they are not equally easy to get off the floor. One highlight is Lagrange VE. It performed remarkably well, but it required a lot of tuning. And for only one of its hyperparameters, namely a feasible elbow value, an intuitive initial guess is possible. All techniques aim at higher rates, but only free bits and MDR do so by specifying a target rate directly. And for that, they are quite convenient. They perform well, they combine trivially with modifications to the model, such as different priors and likelihoods, and modifications to VI, such as change to posterior approximation. To wrap up, our final recommendations are um, do target a particular rate. It's a single directly interpretable hyperparameter and integrates easily with more complex VAs. You can use MDR or FreeBeats for that. Monitor for determinism in the generator. This typically indicates collapse and look for copying behavior, which indicates overfitting. Always use important sampling to estimate log likelihood and perplexity. Estimates of held out perplexity are noisy and biased. Important sampling helps reduce both noise and bias, leading to cleaner conclusions. This is a crucial point. It has received very little attention though, but at this conference, you will find another paper uh, by Logan and et al on important sampling-based evaluation of latent language models, and I really recommend you check that out. Now, here's a future research idea. Rate is an upper bound to mutual information, and it's part of MDR. Distortion relates to a lower bound, and it's part of the Lagrange VA. Perhaps there is something to exploiting both simultaneously that can give us more control and collapse. Check our paper, check our code, and please join us for the Q&A, and thanks for watching.